Rich Gonzalez here along with Jason Eichelberger at Woodward Park in Fresno for the 2019 Seattle State Cross Country Championships. It's going to be a cold one. Temperatures tomorrow in the race is going to be from a low of about 39 for the first race to topping out right about 51 for the last one, which is Division I boys. Should be a lot of great action tomorrow. We have several state, individual, and team champions that come in as the favorites. We also have, of course, teams that are battling it out, trying to get to nationals next weekend in Portland, Oregon. Uh, first off, looking at the situation on the girls' side. Jason, what do you think as far as what catches your eye more, Division One or Division Two, and what do you think the storyline is going to be? It's tough because obviously great storylines abound in both. I'm looking at Division Two. I like champions, you know, experiencing that championship feeling for the first time. In Division Two, we have Newberry Park. Um, last year was their boys that were breaking through. This year, their girls have an opportunity. I'm um, going to be exciting to see if they can follow up what they did last weekend here, with a lot of competitors behind them waiting to see if they are as caliber as they showed last week. You know, usually my experience is when a team that's doing well gets to the stage for the first time, they do unravel on the big stage. But like you mentioned, Newberry Park's a bit different. They're a different beast. They really handled things well last year. They really have a great culture going on. And I could see them, and it would be a nice achievement, but I could see them holding on and doing really well. Now, Division Two is really loaded. We've got St. Francis of Sacramento, St. Francis of Mountain View. Down south, you've got Claremont, the three-time defending state champion. And there are so many good teams. It's deeper than Division One. There are about seven really good teams that would that could, that could rank on, on any given day on their good days. Top 30, 35 teams in the country. So really, really solid. Individually, your thoughts in Division Two or Division One? We'll take Division One for for example here. We'll go with uh, Corey Smith of Buchanan High School. Last year, you work hard all season, you get to this point, and unfortunately, she was not able to answer the bell with an illness. I think this year, going into it, she's one I'm looking at, looking at a chance for maybe retribution to go out here and have a successful showing. When you go over to Division Two, I think <clears throat> when you look at things. It's a solid field, a strong field, and it's one where you could make a case for a lot of different people. Who do you think would be the best example of somebody in Division Two that could win? You know, you have one example. We got Alexandra Kloss, the sophomore. Out of, you know, she's done really, really well in her first year in the sport. Her second race ever, she ran right here at Woodward Park, and she ran the number six time in course history <laughs> performance. Uh, so that's a performer in course history. So pretty incredible. She has more of a soccer background. Uh, you know, you mentioned the fact about Division One and Corey Smith. I mean, she's a gamer. So last year when she came down with the flu on the morning of the state meet, that gives you an idea. If she didn't run, you know it had to be really bad. Yeah. And she wanted to be yeah. there for her team. <laughs> so this year as a senior, she has a chance to lead that team, which includes a couple of freshmen. But it's freshmen that have answered the call really well this year. So it's a pretty good, it's a pretty good group. So, you know, Brian Weaver a few minutes ago, the coach at Buchanan, and he was really optimistic in terms of how this young group and Corey will handle the pressure expectations. But between that, Great Oak right now, they've got a few kids that are that are banged up that are sick, so it's gonna be really, really interesting. And you mentioned Great Oak. Obviously they come in with the credentials, the hype. You got to go out and perform, and obviously it's a program that has been here. They've experienced it. They've done exceedingly well here. You always expect greatness here, but obviously when you come in with maybe a, a few kids not at 100 percent, you never quite know what you're going to get. It will be interesting to see how they answer the call. On paper, they are an overwhelming favorite, but then again, this is why we run the races here to see what happens. Shifting over to the boys, bit, bit different situation. All eyes around the country are going to be over here toward the end of the day, and the reason being is possibly the two very best teams in the country are going to be competing right here tomorrow. In Division One, you have Great Oak. They are the clear favorite. In Division Two, you got Newberry Park. They also there are the very clear favorite. It would be a massive upset if either one was to lose, even though both divisions have some really good teams behind them. Now, you mentioned Great Oak, and obviously, again, their resume speaks for itself. Last week, Southern Section Finals, they ran what amounts to their B team. We'll call them the B team. Um, and they worked phenomenal. Uh, one of the best performances we've seen in the country this year. Now, they're going to run with what is projected to be their top team this year. Their top team hasn't run a competitive race since Mount Sac back in late October. Could there be rust? Uh, we don't project it, but you never know. We have to get to the start line. We get to Newberry Park, like you mentioned. Um, fantastic, and obviously at the, fr at the front of that, you have two of the top runners in the nation highlighted by what is arguably the top runner right now in the nation, Mr. Nico Young, who continues to just throw down performances that leave a lot of us shaking our heads. And obviously he has an individual quest here this weekend as well. What do you think about that, Rich? Uh, first off, regarding Great Oak and any potential rust, uh, 
those kids always come out ready. They are always ready, and they have great leadership this year. They're seniors on there. Uh, you know, Chris Verdugo, you've got Gabe Abs just leading that group. They're going to be ready to go. There's no question about that. They will be ready. They will be focused. Uh, they, they're not going to be denied. Uh, as far as uh, individually, you mentioned Nico Young. The course record here is 14:24. He came out and he ran 14:29. Uh, his coach does a great job of getting these kids ready. He's arriving here a bit fresher. Uh, I think the temptation, the initial plan was to hold back four nationals to some degree. I think the patient will be too strong. The course is in good conditions. I think he's going to go for it. If he goes for it, I do think he will break the record. You know, touching on that a bit and talking to Nico last week, you got the sense that, yes, he was worried more, maybe not worried, but looking forward to the opportunity to help his team win and to win a state championship. I 100% agree with you. Conditions are right. The adrenaline will be flowing. The opportunity to really hammer out a quality race will be there. It's going to be really hard for him to pass up an opportunity if it presents itself. Yeah, this park is going to be buzzing when his race is on the course. Oh. Uh, just wrapping up real quick also, just, just overall in a sense. So it's going to be very cold as we mentioned during the course of the day, but it's going to be probably dry. So the footing should be good. This course handles rain well, and that should land to very fast times. So once again, tomorrow, the 33rd annual CF State Cross Country Championships, a lot of great runners, a couple of the best teams, possibly the top two teams in the country, possibly the top boys uh, individual in the country here at Woodward Park. Until then, we'll see you then.